So for me, Halloween is so much about that nostalgic feeling. It's about those crisp, cool nights and just knowing that 364 days out of the year, everyone expects you to be the same. But that one night of the year, it's okay for you to be different. It's okay for you to be weird. It's okay for you to completely take on a different persona. For me, Halloween is more than a day. It's the fall air getting sharp, the trees getting orange, and the night getting longer. And as I get older, it's easy for birthdays, New Year's, and life itself to lose some of its magic, but never on Halloween. What's up, guys? Blaine Duncan here from Halloween Lives, the podcast of Michael Myers, joined week after week, as always, by my brother, Austin. Dude, it's Halloween, and what kind of podcast, what kind of Halloween podcast would we be if we didn't actually put out an episode, a special Halloween edition episode of the Halloween Lives podcast, right? I mean, we, we had to. We had to do this. It's, uh, you know, it is the holiest of days, and this one is especially good for us, man. Uh, this is this is a huge day for it, Halloween Lives. This is, a, this is a huge day for the podcast. We have got literally our, our biggest guest that we've ever had on the show. We're, we're so excited to get him on. We're going to bring him on in just a moment, uh, but we are, we are so excited. It's like we've been texting back and forth all day that we actually have this person on right now, and... It's going to be fantastic. So you guys are going to love it. We've kept uh, everybody in the dark up until this point um, that this person is going to be joining us. But I'm going to read through their bio and I'm going to try. I'm going to actually I'm going to read his bio and I'm going to try not to say his name because I want to keep people in suspense as long as I possibly can right until the very end. So hopefully I don't slip and say his name, but we're going to get right into it, guys. Uh, Here we go. So from bringing iconic characters to life and producing feature films, this guest has proven time and time again that he is a force to be reckoned with in the entertainment industry. Next up, his production company is producing a graphic novel titled The Last Spartan Red Tape. A native of Saskatoon, Canada, he briefly played semi-professional football before his childhood dream of becoming a professional wrestler began. From 1986 to 1999, he wrestled professionally all over the world for the WCW and UWF as the big as Big Sky with his tag team partner Kevin Nash as well as the Evil Nitron. Uh, he hung up his wrestling boots in 1999 and fully immersed himself in acting following his childhood dream. Uh, his big screen acting debut was in 2000 when he starred as Sabretooth in Marvel Studios X-Men. Additionally, his filming credits uh, include playing with Fire, Troy, Joe Dirt, The Scorpion King, and, of course, Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, When he's not acting, you can find him running his production company. I'm going to just say it. Main Entertainment. Main's company has produced two feature films, Compound Fracture and Penance Penance Lane, and later this year will be releasing their graphic novel, the last Spartan red tape. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Mr. Tyler Maine. How are you, sir? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. I'm doing great, man. Oh, Tyler, it is awesome. first off, it is it is the pleasure is all ours. We are so excited. You are literally one of our favorite people to have ever worked in this franchise. Um we, we didn't talk about this before, but but uh, we did last – where Austin and I are big football fans as well. Last April, we did a Halloween draft. We both drafted our our favorite characters from the film to create – like it was like an NFL draft, but we did it with uh, – like as if we're making our own Halloween film. Austin got the number one pick in the draft. And Austin, who did you select as your number one overall pick for the 2023 Mr. Halloween May. draft? <laughs> Mr. Main, I had to take you um, from from the the two movies you did because your Michael Myers was absolutely the most brutal, incredible character. And and God, I mean, after seeing you in person at age forty five too, I can't imagine a more uh, daunting Michael Myers. Uh, yeah, than, that than was that was take. fun. 
I love the look on both of your faces when you came around that corner for that photo op. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, how cool. I mean, okay, so let's talk about that for a second. So obviously, H45 just happened uh, a few weeks back. It was a great time. Everybody had an awesome time out there. Um, but you did a in-costume photo op. I mean, was that your idea? Was that somebody else's idea? And how did that kind of come to be? Because legitimately, that was a, a highlight of the trip for us. Yeah, you know, I I talked to Trick tr Trick or Treat Studios earlier in the year, and I knew the masks were being released. So I said, "Hey, I'm I'm trying to raise money for charity to uh, help put an end to human trafficking, help DeliverFund.org with their fight against human trafficking. Would you guys uh, donate some of the masks?" And they came right back and said, "How many do you want?" You know. So I did uh, I did four. Uh, in costume appearances and all the proceeds went to deliverfund.org and trafficking in America task force.org to help put an end to human trafficking in America awesome. and around the world and to help law enforcement fight the fight. So yeah, I, and, and with doing the research for the graphic novel, cause the graphic novel is imagine sons of anarchy meets the punisher with the human trafficking storyline. So doing all my research with Christopher priest who wrote the, the book and my wife, Renee Gearlings, I decided I had to do something to give back uh, because just seeing the horrific stuff that is going on. So I've kind of decided to to do that and help deliverfund.org because they've got great stuff that they're uh, developing for law enforcement. So, yeah. That's amazing. I mean, that's it's it's very cool to hear when people do things like that. I mean, because you you obviously have a, a large reach and that's awesome to, you know, to be able to use that to benefit you know, do, to do good things for people. And, and, and that's amazing. I had no idea that that's what, uh, that that's what that was going for, but it makes me, you know, that much more happy that we contributed to it because that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that is the only time that I did it or I'm going to do in costume photo ops. So thank you guys for helping out deliver fund. Appreciate Absolutely. It. No, that was, that I, was, that I was, I so remember, cool. I remember turning that corner and I, I don't know what I said to you uh, necessarily, but I kind of was like, dude, I'm a huge fan. And you were just full Michael. You kind of yeah. just stared at me with the piercing eyes. And I was like, all right, I'm dealing with Mike. And so there's a little bit of fear in my face in that picture. And it's, you know, probably 50% real. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you wanted to get the full experience. You got it. You know, and it was right. funny. It, it, it would really be funny watching people around the corner and see me. Everybody tried to talk to me and they, they got Michael, man. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like yeah, that. <laughs> No, that, that yeah. is so cool. And I, I think that's what just makes that moment special is because we've obviously seen you on the big screen. We've seen we've seen you work not only in the Halloween films, but in other films as well. But to see that character that you brought to life standing in front of us, it it's pretty scary. Like it's you, you, yeah. you you're you're a very you're a very <laughs> large human being. So to so to stand have somebody like that standing in front of you wearing this mask, it's like it it's there's a creep factor there. Yeah, yeah. And the cool thing about it is at each of the shows, one of the uh, fans that bought the tickets won the three masks from Trick or Treat Studios plus the jumpsuit that I was wearing that day. Oh, so, wow. So, yeah, so cool. yeah. So there's four there's four people dressed up tonight as Michael Myers. They had to roll up their pant legs a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. That's that's good. That's awesome, man. No, it was that was that was a lot of fun. Like I said, it was a highlight of the trip. But um, well, Tyler, let's let's start. I mean, obviously, you know, you you've had a, a great career, not only as an actor but a wrestler. I remember, I actually one of my my earliest memories of wrestling is I I remember, and I don't remember if it was like if it was the Saturday morning show that. WCW is doing or what it was, but I remember you and Kevin Nash, who I think was like Ve Vinny, Vinny Vegas. Yeah, Vinny Vegas. Yeah. Vinny Vegas. Yeah. I remember yeah. you guys wrestling together. I was a huge wrestling fan growing up as a kid. Um, but I remember you. So I, I when when it turned out that you, you know, we're gonna play Michael Myers, I started kind of like doing some research and figuring out I know exactly who this guy is. I, you know, and obviously had seen you in, in other films as well. But talk about that getting that role and and did you know what it was when you went into audition for it? Did you know that you were auditioning for the role of Michael Myers? Well, I tell you, I didn't have to audition for it. Oh. I did. Dev I did devil's rejects with Rob. Right. And I was on there for four days. I thought, Hey man, this is a great experience left. Uh, and just was grateful to be there. A few years later, the phone rings. It's Rob. He goes, 
hey, man, I'm doing this movie. If you don't do it, I'm not going to do it. So I go, well, what is it? It's Halloween. And he explained he was wanting to tell the backstory and and show how Michael's a product of his environment. And I was like, I'm in, you know, because I loved the way he explained that he was going to make him more than a one-dimensional character and make him actually a three-dimensional character. And um, the way I approached it was that I was trying to reunite with Lori. I'm not trying to kill her. I'm trying to reunite because family is forever. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right. No, well, that's that's incredible. So there was no no nerves of an audition or anything like that. You were just you just showed up and you were you were Michael. What did you do to to prepare for that? I mean, were you a fan of the 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 series before that? Had you watched the films before? Or did you kind of have to study and do your own research? And really, what did Rob? How much how much latitude did he give you to kind of create that character or make that character your own? Yeah, you know, I did not realize how big of a fan following Halloween has. Thank God, because then I would be just like, oh, my God. But I went back and I watched all the films, except for three where Michael Myers doesn't appear in. I don't know what that's all about. but um, <laughs> So I watched all of them to see what the other guys had done up until then. And then I wanted to figure out how to put my own spin on it, kick it up a notch. And with talking with Rob, he was like, yeah, this is going to be we're going to make this as gruesome as we can. So I was like, all right. I'm in, you know, and it's kind of cool going to work every morning and going, have, having your boss say, Hey, how do you want to kill somebody today? <laughs> right. Very, yeah. very few people get to do that. You're, you're absolutely right. right. No, that that's so true. Did you, when, when you were kind of, I guess, creating your own version of Michael Myers, where did you, I mean, where did you channel that? I mean, did you channel something to kind of be that aggressive, just overbearing, overpowering? Cause Michael Myers, because we hadn't seen that really before. Michael Myers had been, as you sort of said, like a sort of a one dimensional character up until this point. And you just yeah. brought a brutality to that character that we had never seen. Where did you, did you go back to your old wrestling days or how did, how'd you get to that? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you know, I, I just broke down the script and I realized what I had to do with having the opportunity to show another side of Michael in the asylum. I wanted to show that you know, he was out of his element, you know, so to speak. So I was shuffling, slouching and, you know, moving like this. And then as I got closer to that mask, like when I took big Joe Grizzly's suit, mm -hmm. it was more. And then when I dug up the mask and put that on for the first time, Michael Myers is here. The land shark is back, you know? So I wanted, because I couldn't, you know, I wasn't speaking. So it was more through the physicality of the movement. And I wanted to make sure that that character had that story arc to get to where he is. And then to try and carry on and connect with um, Laurie Strode, Scout. Right, right. Yeah, that that's what I think, you know, when, when you hear people talk about Halloween, Rob Zombie's version of Halloween, I think that's what people really respect the most about that film is how, there was just this, this, it, he wasn't just recreating the same story that had already been told. He did put his spin on it. And, and yes, that upset some people, right? But for the majority of the fans out there, they appreciate the fact that he did, he did take some liberties with it. And he told that story. Um, what was it like? What was it like when you, when you, you know, were actually in that role and you were seeing how this was all coming together? Did you know how big that this was going to be once, once it came out and how it was going to really, in a way, revitalize the franchise? Because at, at that point, the franchise was probably at its lowest point of the of the series with you know coming off the um you know the tale of of resurrection and we were about probably about as close to getting like um you know direct to home video halloween films as, as we ever were and really that film you know it reinvigorated the series so did it did it hit home with you at at that time like wow this is this is big and this is gonna be big you know i i like once again when i kind of realized it is when malik akkad who owns the franchise came up to me and he, a, after the original screenings and that and said, Hey, thanks for bringing Michael back. Then I was like, Oh shit. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and to go back and to address the people, some people, yeah, that some people don't like Rob's version, but here's the thing. They would be more pissed off if he would have went in and, and just tried to do 78 frame for frame. It just right. doesn't make sense. What's the right. point of that? You know, yeah. 
and people want to see more and more Halloweens, but yet they get pissed off that you do it. It's, so it's like, it's kind of weird, okay. <laughs> you know, but it's, uh, but I get it. You know, everybody has their favorite, you know, I have my favorites, you know, for the franchise. Mine just happened to be mine. You well, know? <laughs> of course. I mean, obviously, I mean, that, that's only makes sense. That only makes sense. No, and you're, you're, you're totally right. I mean, I think that's, uh, you know, horror fans, and I'm a horror fan, so I can say this. Horror fans are really good about bitching and complaining, right? They're just – that's a whole group of people that they're really good at bitching and complaining. And, you know, people uh, like things the way that they are, but then they complain that things never change. And so it's sort of a no-win situation. But, I mean, you said it perfectly. Like, that, you know, if, if he had just gone back and remade that film shot for shot, frame by frame – you know, people would be complaining about that too. So, um, exactly. you know, he, he, he did what he did. Uh, so, so let's talk about the actually making the film. Do you have like, what are some, I'm sure you got a ton of memories obviously, but what are some really fun memories that you can think of? Uh, maybe first days on set or the first time you got to put the mask on or whatever that is. I mean, what, what are some fun stories that you can share with people watching the show? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie, man. First time you put that jumpsuit on and that mask goes on and, and you know, you hear Roland and the prop master hands you the knife and you're like, right, okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. Right, <laughs> right. You know, and just working with everybody. Everybody was so great to work with. It's like family, you know. I mean, working with Scout, she was 17 years old when she did it, the first one, you know. And then uh, Malcolm and everybody, it was just, it was just fantastic. It's the cast, the crew, everybody was fantastic on it. Rob knows how to bring together a really good team of people. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And that's the thing about his films is they, though there's a lot of people that are the same, he is very uh, meticulous and detailed with who he casts and how he casts because for a lot of these roles, you can't just, and Michael Myers is a perfect example. You can't just cast anyone to be Michael Myers, right? I mean, yes, the character doesn't talk, but the way that you move, the way that you make that character come to life without having, uh, you know, without saying anything is not everybody can do that. So that's, that's credit to you. And that's credit to um, the actors who've played Michael before, because there, there is a lot that goes into that role. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's, uh, you just were talking with Rob and that we developed it, came up with it and away we went, you know, and then luckily it turned out the way it did. That's awesome. No, that's cool. Yeah. Do you remember do you, oh, were you going to say something Moss? I was just going to say that one thing I really love about Rob Zombie's movies is he's always bringing in, um, you know, kind of horror legends and mixing old and new. And I think having guys like Malcolm McDowell and then also having Danielle Harris, yeah, um, people that, you know, horror fans knew and loved already and then putting them with you, I mean, it, it's it's such a great um, cast to have together. Um, it, it was just really cool to see that. Yeah, like every, everybody, like Lou Temple, you know, and Leslie yeah. Easterbrook. Uh, I mean, Courtney Gaines, all these guys. Every, it was just fantastic who's who, and it was it, it was great to be able to work with everybody. You know, it was it was a lot of lot of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you remember what your first scene was that you filmed of of the original or of of uh, the two thousand seven version? Do you remember what that was? Shit, um, I can't. You know, I can't even remember. Sure, I cannot yeah. even remember. But I do remember my first scene with Scout. Okay, well, what was and that? She, and she'll be like, "You tell this story like that, you son of a bitch." It, <laughs> like, <laughs> it was the scene in the basement. Oh, you know. Okay. And where I'm, I originally said, I pull out the picture and I go, boo, you know, and I say, <laughs> right, right. Of course, that was cut. But yeah. that's when, you know, she freaks out. She, she's supposed to pick up the knife and go to stab me. Well, the prop guy forgot to switch out the knife and it was a real, it was the hero knife. And so oh, she wouldn't okay. stab me. But like, I luckily I had a piece of cardboard underneath there or something or oh, something. No. So she stabbed me and I was, we just both were like, Oh damn! Oh, man. So, so my very first scene with Scout, she stabbed me, and then um, the next scene was the charging up the stairs where the, she busts through the doors, right? And she busts through the doors, and she went to stop, and and somebody yelled, "Keep going!" and it wasn't Rob, and so she went up there, and then I went up after her and burst through the doors, and 
she was standing on a ledge that was probably about a foot. And it oh, was okay. probably about 15, 20 feet in the air. And I burst through and she started to fall. So I had to reach and grab her and pull her back in. And so the very first day she tried to stab me and I tried to save her. Now, if you <laughs> ask her, it'll probably be a whole different story, but right, that, right. this is the truth. Right. I was going to say, she's not here. So this is the story that we know. And this is a story that we're going to go with. No, that's exactly. That's funny. So that was uh that was a hell of an introduction that you guys had on day, day one of filming together. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's wild. That's, that's crazy. So obviously, you know, the 2007 version, um, was very successful. Um, you know, was huge in the box office at that time. When did you first learn that there was going to be a part two or a, a Halloween two, I guess? Well, I was, I was always signed to, to more, uh, more films. Okay. And, um, you know, when we got word that H2 was going, I got the script from Rob. It was great. And then, uh, of course, the suits, the Weinstein stepped in and they were like, we're going to change this, we're going to change that. And they came in on set and started doing that. And and then that's when, you know, all that shit happened. But right. Rob had to try and save the film. And and uh, I think it turned out pretty good for what what he had to go through and, and turned it into, uh, he salvaged it is what he did. Yeah. And, so. Uh, Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. I was just going to ask you. Did so? Did the did this the the original screenplay that you had first been given uh, before the the suits, as you said, got a hold of it? Did, had, did it really change a lot between no. the version you first saw versus what we see on the screen today? Oh yeah, yeah. It there, were, okay. there. I mean, Rob was having to do rewrites every day. Sure. You know, I mean, they'd come in and and just like one of the things is, I think it was probably Harvey goes. Yeah, you know, we should uh, kill somebody in a tanning salon. I'm like, Rob and I are both looking at each other. Why the fuck would Michael Myers be in a tanning salon? I hope I can swear on him. I just did. Oh, yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. You're good. But it's like, where did that come from? Like what? Michael's going in to get a tan? Right. It it makes no sense. It just makes no sense, you know? Right. And then that just kept coming, you know, stupid things like that. So. And I mean, poor Rob would come in my trailer at the end of the day and say, oh my God, I got to go home and do more rewrites because they're being idiots, you know? So, but all in all, it turned out great for what it was. You know, you you see Michael here, not here. You know, you see him here and then he crossed paths with Lori because Lori's got that PTSD, which you would have if somebody spent a whole night trying to kill you. you Right, right, yeah. Or you true. think they're trying to kill you, but don't realize that he's trying to reunite with you, you know? It's true. Absolutely. And then finding out that, hey, this guy is your brother, it's like, there'd be right. a little bit of shock, you know? It would be, it'd be freaky. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's interesting because uh, both Austin, so so last week and the week before, Austin and I have been, we'd been doing uh, a couple separate episodes due to some scheduling conflicts, but we did our top five scariest movie or, or moments from the entire franchise. And both of us picked the, I'll call it the dream sequence scene, how yeah. H2 opens up. Talk about that scene for a little bit because that scene is scary as hell and it just stands up against so many of the other movies and the other scenes throughout the movies. That was a that was a scary ass opening for that film. Yeah, yeah, it was. You know, I mean, just 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 the way Rob set it up, you know, and and with the fog machines in there and everything like that. And then you got the dead bodies in the in the hallways and everywhere. You know, and then when I finally get to the nurse, Octavia, I'm actually just stabbing behind the counter a sandbag. And okay. stabbing a sandbag as hard as you can for 30 times each take. <laughs> it's a good workout. It, it, it is a workout, you know. And then right. I, I was like, like reefing on it, you know, and, I, and the grunting, that was the grunting. Like, I mean, if you – if, if you're ever doing anything physical like that, you're going to be making some noise. Right. And uh, so then at the end, Rob goes, give me one more. And then I just, that's when that big one comes and whack, you know, Really. and okay. it just worked out perfectly. And uh, it just set that whole scene for how aggressive that film is going to be and where it's going to go next. You know, 
That's so cool. It, no, it's really nightmarish that whole scene. I mean, it is it is a nightmare. But uh, I in in my video talking about that scene, I talked about how you have some of the I guess the hardest deaths for me to see, and that's that's Buddy there at the end of that scene, and then um, Ishmael in the first movie where you're both like, oh my God, Michael, like just this once, don't kill this guy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's where I'm like, nope, Tyler Maine is the most brutal Michael Myers because he's even killing these two just sweethearts. Um, yeah, well, I mean, like, think about it. Danny wasn't going to let me out of the asylum. His job's right. to keep me there. So he had to go, you know? That's true. <laughs> yeah, and that's what true. better way to drop a TV on your head, you know? Oh <laughs> that God. was... That so was a brutal. brutal death scene. That was that was definitely a brutal because to Austin's point, it, it's kind of like, man, this guy was being very sweet to Michael. It was probably the most caring person he had in the asylum with him. And it just once again goes to show the brutality of not only Michael Myers, but the Michael Myers that you played, where it was just like, not today, bud. You're you're not going home, <laughs> right? This is the end yeah. of this is the end of your watch because this is this is not how it's gonna, you know, you up you're gonna kill this guy and it's you're gonna make it brutal on top of it. So that was yeah. Do you do you have either from from the, uh, the 2007 movie or the 2009 movie? Do you have like a, a couple or one favorite death where you're just like or, or kill that you were just like man, I, I really enjoyed doing that scene for whatever reason. Yeah, you know, I, w after seeing it all come together, that nurse kill, and then also the big Joe Grizzly. Oh, love you it. Know? Love that it. Uh, the setup for that was amazing you know but and and ken goes to me he goes hey i want to make it really real you know as being a pro wrestler i'm like oh man this is not gonna, <laughs> right. you know? so that very first time we we filmed it the the floor was slick and he hit me you know came in and and i slid and of course, Rob calls cut. So I just went to the prop guys. I go, hey, you got any of that stickum spray that you spray on like Mac Tac, right? Right. Sprayed it on the bottom of my shoes. And Ken thought, you know, he goes, ah, oh, I'm going to just push this guy around, you know? And he hit me and it was like, boom. <laughs> and I go, now you're going for a ride. Right. <laughs> and right. I grabbed his wrist and I threw him into that toilet, into the back. I was protecting him the whole way. You know, if you really watch it, I've got his arm here and I'm just reefing on myself. But we destroyed that bathroom completely. And Rob comes in and goes, wow, this breakaway stuff is great. Oh, and no. the prop guy goes, you're buying him a new bathroom. We trashed wow. that toilet. You know, the to we broke the toilet. We broke the stall walls we broke the mirror on the other side the sink i mean it was completely completely trapped. That's incredible yeah that's incredible and and to yeah. do it in a way that you're you're protecting him right i mean obviously you're you're, yeah. you're not you don't want to hurt him right but to, oh. to do it and i guess to rely on your previous training as a wrestler that you're going to make it look extremely real but nobody should be getting hurt exactly exactly you know and it was just we finished it just before lunch and of course, there's blood everywhere. You know, he's covered in blood. He's got it. I mean, I've had the experience. You get that fake blood rolling down the crack of your pants. It's like not good. You know, <laughs> right, right? So he's laying in a pool of blood, and it was lunch. So I said to Wayne Toth, "We shut the lights off and shut the door." And he's like, "Hey guys, guys, guys!" So I just we left <laughs> there for about five minutes before we got him out of the. That's awesome. Well, he was just he was hot. <laughs> that's 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 funny. That is it's a favorite scene of ours, you know, that uh, like the Joe Grizzly bitch thing. Austin and I say that to each other all the time. It's just it was such a great line, you know, and and what he said on the toilet before that when he was looking through the magazine and like it's just a great scene and once again shows that brutality of Michael Myers, you know. I mean, there was just he was he was letting him have it and i loved how they made you know they made ken look bigger than he was right i mean he looked like he was he could go toe to toe nose to nose with michael um and ken's a big dude but he's not as big as you right so that was just the the, the creation of that was just a fantastic scene yeah yeah i mean ken's a big boy he was he was pretty heavy at the time right and i you know i think he had a jack knee too at the time or something cuz he was trying to get in shape for this cuz he was like i'm 
come get them. You know, and, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like, that's awesome. But yeah, it was a lot. Of, it was a lot of fun. So I, I mean, I got a lot of memories from both of them. It was just fantastic. You know. So cool. You mentioned yeah. uh, you mentioned Wayne's name. So obviously, you know, Wayne was was the creator of the mask and sculpted the mask. But talk about that process, because that's always very fascinating to me when, you know, you go in and, and you get the molds done and all of that. What was that like for you? And had you ever been through a process? I mean, obviously, you would probably had appliances on your face before for yeah. some of the some of your previous roles. But what was that process like actually getting a mask, the Michael Myers mask created uh, around your face? Well, you know, you, you go in, you do the life cast, and then he's got the face and molds it to my face, you know, and you can see that it's got my nose and, and all of that. And and uh, I didn't see it until it was done, you know. So then when I came back for to try it all on, it was like, man, this is pretty cool, you know. Mm -hmm. So right. it was um, – it was fantastic to see that come to life. And Wayne is amazing, man. He, yeah. He's just crazy talented, that guy. So Right. Yeah. No, we, we both like those masks. I, and, and I think I can, I don't want to speak for Austin, but I, the, like the, we always call him the hobo Michael Myers of, of H2. I love that look, like with the beard and the mask, you know, being ripped away like that and just exposing some of that face. That was just such a cool look because if you're going to think about Michael Myers, in a very like realistic perspective, if this guy is out there living in the woods and walking around and he's just waiting for his next Halloween or whatever it is, how would he look? And he'd probably look a lot like that. He'd be wearing multiple layers of clothing to stay warm. He'd be eating God knows what and doing whatever, but he would look like that. And I love that look. What did, what were, what were your initial thoughts on that? When you, when you first saw that? I, I mean, I loved it. It, it. it just made it so realistic. Cause right. I mean, Let's face it. What's is Michael Myers going to go shave his face? No, <laughs> right, right. You know, yeah. He's gonna, it, it was a year or however long since the last time he was there. His beard's going to grow. He's going to look scruffy, but he's still on his mission. You know, right. Exactly. And, and I think uh, that's the one where I ended up eating the dog and all of that. You know, <laughs> it, it was, it, it, you know, that's what that's what Michael did to stay alive. You know. Right. Well, and I was going to say, I think that those masks in those two movies are like very symbolic of the type of Michael Myers that we got in those movies where it's, it's gritty, it's dirty and it's nasty, yeah. um, you know, and, sure. and I think it's, it's perfect for the Michael Myers that you played. Yeah. Uh, well, I think of, let's, let's analyze this. I mean, if, if I would have went and buried a mask, it's going to, be partially rotten it's going to be decaying it's going to be yeah. the way it looks and that's the realistic part about it you know if i would have if i would have dug up a completely clean white mask i'm pretty sure a lot of the fans would go bullshit you right. know i know i exactly. would <laughs> yeah exactly it's sort of like, that's sort of like when michael myers gets in a vehicle and and drives for <laughs> You know, like I can't remember which one that was, but he gets in that station wagon and drives. And I'm like, where the hell did he learn how to drive a car? You exactly. Know? Yeah. So, that was very and true. that's what Rob wasn't going to have any of that stuff. You know, it was all going to be for a reason. Sure. Now that makes sense. Now we know that obviously, you know, Halloween two was the last film that Rob Rob did, but it sounds like uh, I sat in on a panel with uh, Scout and Danielle, and they both said that it came very close, very very close that that we almost got another Halloween film from Rob. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? What you knew about that going into it? Had, did you expect a third one, or what was that like? Yeah, I, w I was signed to three. And I don't think that the third one was going to come from Rob. I think they were talking to other directors and people. So I was kind of a little leery and skeptical as to which way to go. But I and Scout were asked if we wanted to do it. I didn't see a script. And then after a very short time, it was put on the shelf. And, uh, you know, I and I think it's just because there was – conflicts with director and whatever whoever was going to be involved at that time sure so yeah sure. and that's and, too bad yeah you know i mean like if if rob would have came back i would have said yeah okay let's let's talk about it but then again i don't want to just do the same thing in each film so 
I'd have to step it up a notch. Like from the first one to the second one, you can see the intensity level jump. So if there was a third one, I don't know what the heck I would have had to do, but it would, I would have to figure out some way to top that last one to give right. the people the experience they want, because I'm, I don't like when you just see the same old thing happening, you know, yep. and it's just playing out in a different way. Yeah. And it, you know, it's not that it's something I've really never thought about. And it's something I said, I don't even know that you and I have ever talked about, but what that would have looked like if there had been a third one, like what, what direction would, whether it was Rob or somebody else, would they have taken that? Because to your point, Tyler, I mean, you, you kind of, there was, there was a transformation obviously within the first one from young Michael to adult Michael, and then a transformation from H1 to H2 when Michael was kind of on the run, if you will, and, and out and about, it would have been really interesting to see what that would have looked like. You know, I mean, did you have any ideas in your head of ideas? Maybe you would have thrown out there as, Hey, what if this happened or what if that happened? Or, or were you not as, as involved in that creative process uh, to, to give those kind of uh, ideas? Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't involved in that. And I mean, I think they were just bouncing it around trying to figure out what they were going to do, you know? So sure. yeah, I could, I couldn't answer. Yeah. That no, it, it, it would have it, it really it would have been it would have been interesting i mean we're you know as as you can tell we're huge halloween fans and and uh, give us more michael right and that's that's kind of where we're at is is we're we're excited to hear obviously the miramax news and and that there's some things uh moving down the line there did you watch uh did you get a chance to see any of the the latest trilogy the david gordon green trilogy uh yeah i've i've seen them okay yeah. all right very, you know, uh, they, they did a, it was, they told their own story, right? Much like Rob did. They, they told their own story, but, um, I, I think between, uh, you know, really, I, I look at, I, I look at, uh, George Wilbur, when he played Michael in part six, I look at what you did in Rob's films and then what James did in, in the, the recent three, like those in my mind, when I think about, and, and obviously Nick Castle, cause he is, he's the OG, right. But when right. I think about that grouping of people, it's like, that is what I think of when I think of Michael Myers, it's just, it, it's, you guys are an amazingly talented group of individuals. And we had Brad Lurie on the show when we had, uh, um, uh, Chris on the show and we were talking and we were like, you know, you guys have gotten to do things that nobody else will ever get to do. Right. Or there's a very small group of people. And how, how does that make you feel when you like at age 45, when you sat up on that stage with all the Michaels, and you you look to your left and you look to your right and there's this, there's this history there. What does that mean to you to be a part of that? I mean, it's just fantastic. The brotherhood of Michaels is strong. You know, everybody cheers for everybody else. It's, it's just a great, great feeling, you know, and I wish them all the best and most success. You know, it, it's, that's the way I look at it, you know, Yeah. and um, it's just a great, great bunch of guys up there on that stage, you know. That's awesome. No, that's very cool. Well, we, we can't tell you how much we loved watching you play, Michael. It was it was absolutely a you know an absolute privilege for us. But let's let's talk a little bit about the last Spartan before we we take off for the night. Let's let's hear everything you can share. I know you you kind of um, you've got some things going on with that right now that that we want to talk about. So let's let's touch on the red the the last Spartan. Yeah, we're right in the throes of our Kickstarter right now. So please check it out. It's the last Spartan Red Tape on Kickstarter. You can go to um, my Instagram, The Real Tyler Main, my Facebook, The Real Tyler Main. You can go to mainentertainment.com, tylermain.com, and it will all lead you to The Last Spartan Red Tape. We've got an homage Halloween cover from the, so cool. the 2007, which is, I'm going to say it's pretty badass. Yeah, that is, you know, that yeah. is badass. Yeah, Charles Delarica did amazing work with that and um but for the story imagine sons of anarchy meets the punisher with a human trafficking storyline yeah. so that is why i've teamed with the human trafficking awareness organizations to help raise awareness about human trafficking through our research writing it with christopher priest we would just uncover so many things and and most people think out of sight out of mind you know and human trafficking will never affect them. But through going to these conventions, all of these conventions, I'm talking with first responders uh, that are like, thank you for bringing awareness to this because it is a very serious topic. And I'm talking to the fans that it has affected 
some of them, you know, um, like one of the gentlemen that I was talking to, he says his niece was just about trafficked and she was drugged, taken out the back door of a club. Luckily, a bouncer noticed, beat the hell out of the one guy. The other guy took off. But with the law enforcement backtracking where these guys were and where they've been, they found that there was three other women drugged and chained in a hotel waiting to be trafficked, and she was going to be the fourth. So, you know, it is a very serious thing out there. So, you know, through creating this book, it's, it, I just realized that it is a very, very serious, serious topic, and I wanted to raise awareness for it. You know, and we have one of the great tiers is coffee and comics. It is deliver funds coffee and you get the graphic novel. So you can start your day with a great cup of coffee and a great read. And that money is going to deliver fund to help them fight human trafficking. That's amazing. That it, it, it's like, yeah. as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I mean, like to just to, to, to take what you have done and to use that for, you know, for something good is, is, is awesome. And I think you, uh, you know, you see celebrities at some time, you know, at, at times do things that you, you feel like they're maybe putting themselves a little bit more on a pedestal than they are for really the right reasons. Right. Or they're, they're not doing it for the right reasons. And I, I can tell just by you talking that this is something that you're very passionate about. And as you should be, as we all should be, because this is, it's, it's scary as hell. Some of the stuff that you have, uh, you know, that's going on out in the world, far more scary than a Halloween film. There is some, there's some really yeah. nasty stuff happening. That's, um, that's so, the real, that's the real boogeyman, you know? Yeah, absolutely. We got to try, try and put a, put an end to it, you know, but no. and also like with the graphic novel, it came together because of my wife, Renee Gearlings. I think you guys met her. She was at age 45 with me. Mm -hmm. She worked at Top Cow Comics. She was the editor-in-chief there for a decade. She's been in the comic business for decades, worked at uh, Top Cow, IDW, worked for Marvel, worked for Radical, uh, you know, Darby Pop, all of these top-tier companies. So through her connections and everything, we were able to get the top-tier team of people. You know, it's amazing. I, I was like, I really want to talk to Christopher Priest. How are we going to get a hold of Christopher? And she picks up the phone and calls Jim McLaughlin and, and he goes, I represent him. When do you want to talk wow. to him? You know, so then that connection came. Right. And then she called her, um, she called her old boss, Mark Silvestri, and said, Hey, could you do a cover for me? It would mean so much. This is my first graphic novel that I'm putting out. And he, the cover, the regular cover is amazing, you know, and Charlie's cover, the homage cover, all fantastic. And the interior art to go with a story is amazing. You got, you got Will Conrad, Jimbo Salgado, Michael Montanot, all top tier artists in their own right. So this is a top tier project. And I would greatly appreciate if everybody watching this would Go over to Kickstarter, the last Spartan red tape, and please, please support. Absolutely. No, and, and we we strongly encourage everybody to do that because it's obviously it's a great thing that you're doing. Um, plus, it's probably going to be, well, not probably, it will be a lot of fun to read, right? It's it's going to be a great story, and um, and who knows where that may go to, right? I mean, there may be potential there to turn that into something else, and um, it, it's a it's a uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it sounds like a great story, obviously based on something that's very horrific, but I'm, I'm going to guess there's some, uh, you know, you bring some things into it where there's some ass kicking going on. And, uh, you know, for, for those kind of people, we, we love seeing them get their ass kicked, right? Because it's, exactly. uh, it's a exactly. nasty world. Well, no, and, that's awesome. and hopefully it can just open up people's eyes to what is actually going on. You know, if it, if it raises awareness and even opens up a channel between parents and their kids to be able to talk about it, Right. Because we've got to protect the vulnerable ones. And it, it is human trafficking has been around since the dawn of time, but it is the most prominent that it has ever been in the world today because of this internet. You know, you can use the internet for good, you can use the internet for bad. And the ones using it for bad are doing these despicable things, and we got to put a stop to them. Right. Right. Well, I, 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 love think it. it's, I, love I think it. it's really cool that you're you're doing this um especially after x-men which was kind of the you know the symbolic of, of racism back in the 60s 
Um, yeah. And then, you know, you got Sabretooth um, making that same sort of thing happen um, today. It's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's very yeah. cool. Thank, thank you guys for having me on. Yes. Thank you, Todd. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And hey, happy Halloween, everybody. Tyler, happy Halloween. And thank you so much for great, you know, being so gracious to come on the show. Uh, you are the best guest that we've ever had. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It's been an absolute pleasure and a blast. And uh, we'll do it again someday. And happy Halloween to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Check out the Kickstarter, everybody. That's Peace. right. I'm Thanks, guys. Here. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Appreciate it. Guys, this has been another episode of Halloween Lives, the podcast of Michael Myers. I'm Blaine Duncan. That's my brother, Austin. And this is Tyler Maine. Go check out his Kickstarter. Happy Halloween, everybody. Be safe and have a good one.